have Elisa Velarde and Laura Willoughby with everything I ever needed to know I learned from doing triathlons. Give it up. I'm going to kill Laura after this. <laughs> Speaking of, Laura, 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 where Coming. are you? Close, I had to take a little bit of a swim. A good way to start a virtual triathlon. Well, you know, I did have time to think. Really, if you think about it, triathlon really is the perfect example of what life is really all about. That's true. Triathlon is very much a reflection of everyday life. Like anything in life, like any adventure that you'll try, um, triathlon requires kind of a whole new tool set, or at least a retooling of your existing tool set. Each of us came to triathlon for very different reasons. But the lessons that we learned were really kind of galvanizing and simple. Yeah, in fact, training for and competing in triathlons, I think, showed us who we really are, gave us a new sense of ourselves, and taught us some universal lessons. Universal lessons. Like practice as you would race. You can't expect to put in a minimal sort of half-hearted effort and get the maximum return. You really have to focus, and you have to invest your passion and your drive. You can't expect, again, to get something out of it if you didn't put anything in. And you end up with a personal record. So the greatest personal records I've found are about joy and passion and not about race times. Um, Laura and I both have experience and stories about personal bests and personal disappointments. But joy and passion are the best, especially when there are obstacles involved. Well, if you forget that, for instance, I think life will throw you obstacles. The whole point being obstacles are opportunities to look at the situation a different way. It doesn't matter if you hurt your foot during a race day or you get a flat tire, you didn't have enough time for training. The point is to look at the situation where you are now and readjust. <laughs> After all, resistance only has the meaning you give it. No matter how many road debris happen to be in your tires. <laughs> yes, resistance does have the meaning you give it. You really have to persevere. You have to really want it. You have to really want to get in there and give it everything you have. It's not about really tolerating unpleasantness. It's about maximizing the circumstances that you happen to be in. So finding a way to say, how do I make the best of what I have right now? How do I travel to a different place from the place I'm in? Right, well that's all part of training. It's all part of getting ready for the race, whether it's an actual triathlon or whether it's something else, another figurative race in your life. The point is, you learn these lessons as you train. You get ready for what's gonna happen because eventually, Race day comes. It's time <laughs> to try. You've done the training, and you've gotten all your great swag. Great swag aside, <laughs> the mental game is your greatest asset. And this is one of my favorite slides because it is absolutely, I think, my best asset, and I'm really making good use of it tonight. Um, but just immerse yourself. Really have a calm resolve. Be present. Eventually, you're going to get to the swim. And while you might have practice in, say, clear water, usually what you find is the exact opposite. Much like, say, life. Nessie. Point being, yes, well, <laughs> when you're scared, immerse yourself. Immerse yourself in the situation. Eventually, you'll get to the end, and you'll get to the first transition, where you'll learn the universal truth of life. The faster you change, the faster you finish. And that you have precious few seconds to decide how the next half is going to go. And your next half will be on the bike. And the lesson of the bike is to really stick to your plan. You may feel great and saucy in the middle of that bike and think, I'm strong, I can speed up. Don't do it. Stick to the plan. <laughs> Stay with it. Breathe, relax, and keep your pace. Because if you don't, right about now is when your race might suck. You still have to run. <laughs> so we want to bring out some mid-race pointers. Make it fun. I like to sing and wave, no joke, in the middle of a triathlon. Elisa, what do you like to do? I like to pretend like it's happening to Laura. <laughs> <laughs> the point is to harness your emotions. You're going to be mad. You're going to feel competitive. You're going to be happy. Use them to your advantage to propel you along. And use a little bit of ridiculousness to lighten your feet. Yes, and speaking of light feet, the most important part, I think, of the whole entire triathlon lesson set is Focus on the mile you're on. That's what the run lesson is. That's what the run teaches. It's going to hurt. It'll be painful. You'll really want to give up. But if you can think about just the next stride, not the next mile or the next minute, the next stride, and just focus on the mile you're on. Eventually, you'll get to the finish, where you're about to discover it's not about your time, it's not about your place, but it's about what you learned on the journey that you've been on this entire time. It's true. It's about celebrating the finish and having acceptance. Acceptance, I think, is the better part of grace. If you can 
think about the place you are and not judge it. I find that analysis is a far better coach than judgment. If you can really say, I am where I am and that's fine with me, then you have the grace to keep on trying for another day. Which will happen because as with many things that we get into in our life, the finish line isn't actually the finish. It's really just the beginning. It's true. So if you think about the lessons we've learned as triathletes and certainly um, in the greater scheme of life, we discovered that we're far braver than we really gave ourselves credit for and that we're stronger than we thought. And at the end of the day, we can really define the meaning of the word me. So keep on trying. Thank <laughs> you.